Welcome to LMMS and Snitzel Effects Watch and Learn. My name is Anfa, and I'm not gonna talk like that for the whole episode. <laughs> okay, so stop the music. Huh, long time no see, huh? Sorry for the overcompressed vocals, I'm just fiddling around with stuff. If you can take a look, uh, just watch. I'm compressing, de-essing, gating, and equalizing. All that beautiful thanks to her. Uh, also, it's so cute. All right, no stupid talk. We're gonna do, uh, what's they call it? Uh, I got a note right there, yeah, chimes. This is it, chimes. We're gonna do chimes. You know, these little dingy dingies that you hit your finger and Well, it's not exactly what we're gonna do exactly, but something like that. Uh, and Zenith FX has some fantastic tools for doing this stuff that's unique for any synthesizer I know. I haven't found any other commercial or free synthesizer that is capable of doing this stuff. So, check it out. All right, the last time we saw, we had this. Maybe we have these too. Oh, wait, I gotta reroute my audio so they simply sidechain. Wait, wait, wait a second. Uh, all right, I gotta sit up. Back to work! Now, when I talk, the music will automatically get quieter, thanks to the awesome SC3 compressor, which is sidechain. So you have free input sidechain, which is controlling the loudness change, left and right input, so it's a stereo signal. The thing that the sound is pushed from LMMS is pushed through here to my voice that is fairly sequelized, gated, DS compressed, is put in a sidechain input. And then this is pumped to the system out of which is recorded by Simple Screen Recorder. And you get this cool radio-like effect. Isn't that cool? Shut up already! Okay, we're going chimes. So, as usual, let's get another chimey chimes. I mean, it's in the sub effects. I will not draw you a picture this time because I don't have my paint installed. I'm on a quite new Linux installation. It's Cake Studio 1404 version F G. Yeah. Okay, so we're assigned the chimes to channel 12. The signal is so quiet we can't see anything yet. But before we do anything, we need some notes. And for this, I'm going to create an entirely new beat path baseline pattern and make it double the time. Oh, I think I made triple. No, double. Okay, it's double. So first thing is we need to input some notes because, yeah, like, let's Actually, the length of them is not important because we can do them anything. However, I will put the notes in using ALT, like holding key ALT, so I'm not limited by the grid. I'm doing, I'll do something like that. And uh, maybe with SHIFT and ALT, I will shorten the whole sequence a bit. You can use this technique to you to make uh, breaking glass sound and stuff. And we'll probably be doing that too. Okay, so the thing is, chimes are tones, so it's like hitting a triangle, but they are not tuned to any musical pitch, or rather, they are covering a scale of half tone or se or I mean semitone or uh, whole tone. So it's not a musical scale, it's sub-musical scale. And the pitch differences are too small to be recognized as a, as a pitch on their own. Like a note. I will make it shorter, just one more. Okay, this sounds terrible right now. But we're gonna do some things that will change that. First thing... I'm changing the envelope to a percussive one. We could make this now. I'd like it to go like this. 
However, we're going to do this very differently. Because we're not going to model the sound using a, an oscillator. We're going to model the sound using a filter. So what I want now is just an impulse. Yeah, kind of like this. Even shorter. Yeah, I hit this because it force release. Uh, force release means that when the note ends, and the note off message comes, the release is going to be forced, no matter where the value is. So I'm turning this off so the length of the note doesn't have any effect on the sound. It wouldn't whatsoever, but well. Now what we have is we have a bunch of notes. And now we're going to use a peak filter. Ah, that's going to sound very, very harsh. I'm going to make it very narrow. Actually, it can't be very, uh, it can be very, Can be very much resonate, uh, very much overlaid, like too much stages, because it's not gonna resonance, right? Now we can make that the frequency of the note is affecting the frequency of the filter. If we turn the panning all the way left, we get random panning, which is very nice for this kind of effect. However, I don't like that we have this uh, low pitched click there still. However, I think we can get rid of it with a filter. Not entirely. Not perfect. Okay. So that's one, like one way to do this. Uh, I don't like the sound of this one very clicky and harsh and not 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 natural at all so I'm gonna dump this one gonna grab another ones and that's sub effects make this chimes too copy the notes mute this instrument mute the clip as well so when we unmute it we still don't hear it and assign it to channel 12 as well Okay, now the second take, we're gonna do it differently, actually using the oscillator. Well, first we need is pitch it up. Now it sounds almost like a breaking glass. I'm reaching the, I'm changing the filter to high pass. And pushing all the way and pushing pushing it all the way down so it doesn't actually do anything to the sound. Now this sounds better, cleaner, no so much click. I can reduce the click with more attack. 
and we can freely adjust the envelope which is a little bit better than what we have with filters just filters so random panning and last but not least sense of effects has a very funny feature which changes the tuning of the notes relative so we can actually scale the musical scale so we can make like five octaves be like five semitones how the frequency varies according to the keyboard leftmost for fixed frequency yeah this is no variation I think 64 is exactly the normal behavior. We can also increase the range. However, that's not the case because the chimes sound in a small range, not that big one. So I would make this a little longer. Also, they frequently start from the highest to the lowest, so we should invert this. Uh, nope. Okay. Try to do this with shift. Almost. Yeah, sign kind of like that. Oh, not necessarily. Shift and Alt. Nope. Ain't working. Gotta do it the other way. The hard way. Remember to shift uh, to hold Alt. And now we're just painting with sound. I mean, painting with notes. You can hear that the long, lower notes have longer envelopes. They're also quite loud and have a lot of attack. I mean, a lot of... I also frequently like, add a few layers. Look that we're running out of uh, octaves, so I'm going to Control A, everything select, select everything, and then press Control down to shift it one octave down, Control down again. And yeah, now we have more room. Some random quiet notes just bouncing around on and on. This one could bounce. That one could bounce. And short short the short ones should bounce like more frequently. We can also like, affect the overall loudness over time so the the whole system is losing energy. Trying to simulate that. And the lower, like, the lower should already start quieter because the higher ones were first stroke and had more energy. Kind of this. What I don't like is that the envelope is stretching very much. So I'm going to change the envelope stretch. On lower notes, make the envelopes longer. I'm going to change this. It's only very slightly tiny and made it longer. Another thing, the attack. Yeah. 
That's more like it. And mm, finally, we need some reverb. Let's listen to it all wet, shorten the time. Let go some high frequencies, so I'm changing this Lopez filter to filtering out the lows of a high pass filter. That's a little bit long. I should filter out the highest thing. Yeah. Kind of this. It's quiet. I should pump it up. You could also use some echo, which is delay, to make this effect last a little longer. Like we have these bouncing around each other for some time. Damping will make the, the latter more uh, having less high frequency content. So, so the highs are, are um, dying out sooner, and the low frequencies are resonating longer. And finally, let's use some global EQ. See how low does it go? That's pretty high. It's all somewhere below, be above 100 kilohertz. This is the white line. 100 kilohertz, 100 hertz. 10,000, I mean, 1,000 hertz, 1 kilohertz, 100 hertz, 10 kilohertz. Yeah. Gonna use a little peak filter. Oh, this is a very prominent spot. I'm gonna dampen this a little bit. I mean, attenuate it. And sweep the frequency range to find some hot spots. Okay, I think I can boost the highs generally. Oh, not too much. Can you hear it? Yeah, it would get the ugly clicks. Not pleasant sounds. Alrighty, I'd say that's our chimes, so we can have our beat, which we'll play for long, and then out of nowhere, yeah, that's totally, totally it. Okay, I think, by the way, the whole track is very loud, I like for now. So I'm gonna use a fast look ahead limiter, which will prevent any clipping, and I will make it by four decibels quieter. Better. Huh. Yeah, that's it. Thanks for watching. Thanks for watching, and if you would like to see more like this, you can subscribe to my YouTube channel. If you want to know some particular types of FX sounds you'd like to know how to do, you can ask me a question. I have a list. Uh, maybe I'll manage to like make all of them in a few years. <laughs> maybe not. Okay. Bye.